Hey there, and welcome to the first part of our Seat and Guide 10XY series. That's going to be a series covering how to set up our Seat and Guide 10XY, selecting fixturing, writing a program, and not only going hole to hole with the seat cutting, but going head to head. Um, we're here on our demo SG10XY. As I said, the, the 10XY is our CNC fully automated hole to hole seat cutting machine. Uh, and really, it's geared towards a production mindset. So we offer it with our PER fixture, production fixture. The design of it is it actually clamps up. So you load the head in, and the jaws move up pneumatically with the press of a button, and that's going to clamp off the deck surface. So to get started here in this first part, we're just going to show you um, loading a head in, getting it set up properly, setting the zeros in the machine, and saving the guide location or the hole location uh, to kind of start off writing that program. So the first thing that I like to do is I move the work head to the side, and I like to move the table out. Now today we're going to do uh, be setting up small block Chevy heads. We have different fixtures for wedge style heads like small block Chevy, big block Chevy, uh, and then parallel heads like LS. We have plates for those. We also have dedicated fixturing for diesel applications like Duramax, 5.9 Cummins, both 12 and 24 valve. Um, and yeah, lots of, lots of different heads. So the, that's an important thing. If you're looking into one of these or you have one of these, make sure you check in the catalogs or contact your local sales rep and let them know what you're doing, the types of heads you want to be doing uh, so that we can either get you the fixturing that we currently offer or if it's a new style head that we don't offer, we can always make locators uh, to make sure that you're running in that production-minded fashion. So we're here with the wedge style fixture for small block Chevy. This fixture got these two posts and we're actually locating off of the head bolt locations on the head, the furthest two away. With this one, we actually load the head from the back, and there's a specific reason for that. We'll go over that uh, once we get the head in here. So the first thing we wanna do is we need to get these bases uh, and get these posts close to where they're gonna be in their final position. The easiest way to do that is take a tape measure and measure those furthest two uh, head bolt locations on the head. So on these, about 17 and a half inches. So I can go over here, about 19. And this base floats on one button over here. So we press this, and we can shimmy these together. We just want to get it close for now. Not too close there. All right, we'll start there. Now, the jaws are open. You can go ahead and load the head. Grab this guy, go over the back, slide in. And what I want to do is I'm just going to rest. I got one of these posts lined up in here on this side. And I need to move it a little on this side. So now what we do with the head in there, we can just float this fixture and give it a wiggle. Let things kind of self-align. Now with the wedge style fixture, these posts is what lets us handle the angle difference. So that it's free, has a degree of freedom to clamp up and be flush. And now to answer that question of why would we load that head in the back on this fixture, the reason for that is when we tilt this to the final position that's gonna be in the cut, and you want to be able to just unload a head, load another one. When you press release, we didn't load from the back, the head falls out. It's a safety concern, it can land on your toes, especially with a cast iron head like this, it's not gonna be a good day. So by this, the way this is designed is just actually captive. So you'll see it later when we're, we're at that angle, we can't get this head out this way. It can only come out from the back, so that makes it safe. We're gonna clamp this guy up, once we got it in there, and we're, we're centered. Go over here inside the software, tap the clamp button, and you'll see we've clamped up the cylinder head now. So it's flush in here on the top surface. I always like to just do this little wiggle, make sure that it's in there correctly, make sure it's flush. So now what we want to do 
we create a new program, have our template in there, and then we need to align this picture. So if I go here to the software, I'm gonna bring this over, just so the screen's in front of me. So we're doing a new program. So on the home screen on the Seaton Guide software, on the left side we have a program select. So we're gonna write a new program. I'm just gonna let it be called the default head today. You could rename it to whatever you want. Then on the right side, you have the operations. You wanna select new, production seat cut, and it'll ask me if it's an intake or exhaust. We have uh, tool holders on the right of these machines that can be set up so it'll automatically switch from intake to exhaust depending on what uh, cutter you grab. So if you want to set up your intake first, I can say yes, and it'll create a labeled intake production seat cut program. I usually go ahead and create the exhaust at the same time. So I'll go new, production seat cut again. This time I'm gonna say no to is it an intake, and that creates the exhaust. Now I got my two uh, programs in there. I just need to go and fill them out with information. So I'm gonna highlight the intake production seat cut here, press select, and it'll open up the locations tab. That's always where it starts. The locations tab are the X, Y locations for the guides that you're for the guides of the seats you're going to be cutting. We have four locations here for four intake seats to be cut. So now, we've finished setting this head up. If I go over here to Operation Setup, the Operation Setup page has the I.O. operation at the bottom of the screen. That lets me uh, release the lock for this fixture so I can tilt the head over. Um, and it also lets me float the work head and release the cylinder. So I want to tilt this head so I'll press fixture tilt clamp. Release the uh, load pin. And I'll just eyeball tilt this over. Now I'm going to grab my pilot. Stick a pilot down in one of these guides. And I'm also going to hand wheel this back. So I'll select Y hand wheel so I move this all the way forward. Just to make it easier to get the head in there, I'll move this back. Now our angle sensor is up here on the left side of the work kit. Grab this. This guy only reads one way, so I want to do front to back. Uh, so I'm going to angle the angle sensor 90 degrees from where it was sitting on this guy. Now again with the fixture unlocked, I can look here. The readout for the angle sensor is in the left, lower left corner of the, the screen. I just want to get that close know maybe one off uh, I'm just gonna get it close with the hands just moving this and these two handles over here this is your fine tilt adjustment the top one you tighten that down to engage the fine tilt then you use the bottom and you can fine adjust so now I'll just get this until it says zero zero and now I'll lock the fill the fixture down that should be about zero it's just straight up straight left and right we don't have to worry about that with small block Chevy typically so that gets the head angled uh, so that this pilot's sticking straight up and down front to back now uh, and this stuff is optional uh, but it's a good idea to always do it. We have these two guides up here. Since when we installed this and we were setting this up, we were floating this picture, it could be off at a little bit of an angle. But a head like this doesn't really matter, and we have a Y-axis uh, ball screw on this machine, so if the hole locations aren't aligned perfectly in Y, it can just save those and find them. But uh, I find it's easiest and makes the most sense to just get all the holes lined up along the table here. And the way you do that is you can use these pin guides and they're adjustable, they can just come down. And then simply pick two guides, two intakes, two exhausts, whatever you want to do, and have two pilots. Now we've got two pilots installed on the furthest two intakes. And now, I need to move 
this whole table back with a Y hand wheel. And then once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to float this, the base itself, the cradle. What I want to do is I just want to let these two pilots touch these guides gently. While I have the floating gauge. And then release the float. And that just makes sure now we know we had two points making a line here. We know that all these holes are going to pretty much be in the same line. And that just makes the programming for the Y values really simple. You're done with those? Move to the side. Take our secondary planet back up. And now we can grab our cutter and we're going to put it inside the spindle itself. So now we just need to go, we're doing intake. I've already set up cutters for these. Uh, all we have to do is we're going to put the tool in here, put the pilot in there, and then we just need to move and position the pilot over the guides for the holes we want to do. And then we'll save those up here in the locations tab. So put that guy in there, grab my pilot, and put that inside the tool holder. Now you'll notice if you're not familiar with the Rottler system, it's our UPT uh, tool holder design, which means the pilot stays in the tool. Uh, our uh, pilots are fixed pilots, they have taper, and they do register inside the guide itself, and the tool holder spins on top of them during cutting. Uh, but it does actually retain that pilot inside of here so that you can go hold a hole. So to save some hole locations, we can use the hand wheel commands. And we just need to eyeball our first hole. So I can adjust X and Y as necessary until I see that the pilot, just the tip of it, is right above starting to go into the first guy. When that's done, we're gonna make that our zero, zero location. So double tap XDRO and YDRO down here at the bottom of the screen. And that zeroes out the X and Y axis on this first hole. Now there's two ways to program the rest of the holes. If you know the bore spacing and every, uh, and the spacing between all the, the guides is the same, you can up here on the top set of numbers, it's the X values, you can type the, that, that bore spacing in and multiply times through to four to, uh, to just quickly program. With small block Chevy, since it flip flops, it's usually easiest to just find each one. So I'll move over to the second hole. And again, you just eyeball. It just needs to be close. The pilot has uh, a pretty significant chamfer on the bottom. So you're just looking to make sure that the pilot is gonna go in when it uh, is coming down. Then I can simply press set two, that sets hole two, up again. Move over to three. Set three. Finally, move to four. Set four. So now we've we've set the first intake as zero zero, and then we have hole two, three, and four. And that's it. That's all you have to do. This is as far as hole locations and storing those locations and setting up the head, we're done. Uh, so that's gonna conclude the first part of this series of videos. In the next part, we'll go over, now we need to set the Z0, put feeds and speeds in, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then uh, we'll actually run in probably the third series and we'll go head to head and talk about some of those other uh, unique things that happen. So, Hope this is helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next part.